is whiskey made? Well, first we need to get our hands on some sugar. That's why we use grain while making whiskey. So grain is basically a seed of grass. So it's got a husk, inside is an endosperm full of starch, and that surrounds the germ, which is the little seed embryo. Now to get those starches to turn to sugars, we pretend it's spring. Spring germinates those seeds and it sends enzymes which turn those starches into sugars. That little embryo though, if it starts to grow, it takes all of those sugars and becomes a shoot. Now, instead of that happening, we dry out that seed. So we have basically a dry sack of sugar. We dry that seed out and then we take it and we grind it. So we grind that up, that exposes all of the inside of that seed and gives us a nice flour full of starches and sugars. Now we put that in a lot of hot water and we let that hot water break apart those starches and soften them. And they go from being little soft pockets into big long strings of gelatinous starch. Now from that point, your enzymes can go crazy. What do enzymes do? Well, they go in and they cut the starches into little bitty sugars. Now those little sugars get eaten by yeast. So that's great. So we've got our gelatinization, which is those starches opening up and our saccharification, which is those starches turning to sugars. Now we've got the sugary water, so we send it over to our fermentation tank. Now there we add the yeast. The yeast eats the sugar and produces ethanol, yay, carbon dioxide, heat, and some other biomass sort of materials, so congeners and, and uh, lipids and other things into, that, into the, the water. But what we really care about is that ethanol, right? So it starts to produce ethanol, starts to produce this heat. The reaction it's making produces heat, but unfortunately, yeast can't handle either of those things. It stresses out the rising amount of ethanol and it stresses out with all that heat until basically it gets too high and kills itself. That's typically around eight to 10% ABV, um, three to five days. So now we have a big vat full of eight to 10% beer. So we take that beer and we put it directly into our still. Now, our first still is only going to concentrate the ethanol. So with the way that we do this is we boil that beer and the alcohol evaporates before the water does. So we're gonna take that alcohol off and we're gonna cut once we start to lose the alcohol and get to water. So we're gonna have 20 to 25% alcohol by volume, called our low wine. Now we take the low wine and we put it into our spirit still. Now here is where we actually make cuts. As we're distilling, some of the flavors and alcohols that come off first are actually a little bit more astringent. They're gonna be more solventy. So those are our heads and we're gonna make sure to cut those first and take those away. Then we're gonna to come to our hearts. That is our spirit, that is our ethanol, and we're gonna keep that. Now, as we start to go further down our run, the temperatures are increasing and we're gonna to start to get heavy, oily fusels. So those we don't want, mushroomy, earthy flavors um, and an oily texture. So those are our tails. So we'll take the heads and tails off. We'll keep that heart. We have our nice, clear new make and we're going to put that, probably 60 to 80% alcohol, and we're gonna put that into a barrel. Now, why are we putting it into a barrel? Well, we use oak, which typically gives us really nice flavors. Now we toast and char that oak and give us some color. It'll give us some caramel, some sugars, some really wonderful flavors. Now, while it's aging in that oak, it's gonna pull extractives from the barrel. Now, also while it's sitting there, we're going to get some evaporation. Now, this is called our angel share. When you're in a warm environment, you're gonna get a higher angel share, seven to 10 percent. Some, if you're in Kentucky, if you're in the islands, if you're in Texas, and if you're in Scotland, it'd be about one and a half to two percent. So, less percentage is evaporating off a year. Now, we donate this to the angels, we say, in order to be able to keep our delicious whiskey. Now, this is part of the reason that whiskeys that are aged for a long time are more expensive there's less of them available at the end of their maturation, right? So maturation comes to an end. We decide that based on the taste of the whiskey, not based on the age, because depending on where you age, if it's hotter, you're gonna extract more flavor faster, so you'll need a shorter maturation. If you're somewhere that's cooler, a longer maturation is actually gonna give you the same level, the same extractives as you may get in a hot environment. So now we've got our whiskey. We can choose to chill filter it, which will pull out fatty acids so that it doesn't get cloudy. It'll be perfectly clear. Or we can choose not to filter it. You can choose to add caramel coloring E150A if you are in Scotland, which is very traditional, or we do no color added. But we just make sure that it goes in that bottle at no less than 40% ABV or 80 proof. <laughs> From grain to bottle, that is how we make whiskey.